In today's episode, we're gonna talk about TIG welding safety. Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name is Dusty. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do welding projects in both two-dimensional and three-dimensional art surfaces and on my channel. I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to bounce back. There's plenty of other videos for you to watch there. So today we're gonna go over something that somebody suggested and I gotta say, it's kind of a great idea. Something maybe we should have talked about a long time ago and that is safety. You know, it's crazy. A lot of the time we forget about we're operating machines that are extremely dangerous and can do all kinds of crazy stuff if we're not too careful. A lot of other things that can happen to us in the shop when we're not even thinking about it. So what do you say? Even though it might be a little boring, let's do a little refresher today. If I forgot anything, which I probably will because I always manage to forget some of this stuff, leave it in the comments below. Let me know if there's anything else you can add to this one. We could all sharpen up on some safety stuff, I think. Actually, crazy story. One of my friends, shout out to Jordan, just ran both of his hands over a table saw. Shout out to you, Jordan, he's okay. He got stitched up. I don't even know how it happened, but that's crazy. Uh, luckily, I'm not working with any table saws in here. Hopefully, <laughs> Jesus, I'm thrown off even thinking about that. That's such a gnarly thing. I'm sure everybody who's watching has a crazy story of somebody who got messed up while they're at work. We forget about what we're doing a lot of the time. We get so focused on the projects that we're doing and trying to do a good job. It happens, it happens to the best of us. So let's go over some safety stuff today. Hopefully we'll brush up on a few things to remind us to stay fresh out there. And again, like I said, if you can think of anything that I missed, drop it in the comments below. So some of this stuff obviously is gonna be a little bit self-explanatory, but we gotta do it. Simply because I know that there's definitely some people out there watching who are a little bit haphazard when it comes to safety. So let's just make sure that we're clear on all this stuff before we get to any welding exercise or any shop stuff for that matter. One of the most common things I see with my students is their power setups. There are so many different types of machines with so many different types of power requirements and all this stuff. Some machines with more power draw, some machines with less, some with different duty cycles. You need to research what type of power requirements your machines have and what you're working with in your shop. I do not recommend just winging it and seeing if you pop a breaker, hoping for the best. You are working with a very powerful machine with electrical demands that are very different from machine to machine and job to job. My house was not wired up properly for machines like this in my studio here. So I actually had to get my dad in here who knows a lot more about electrical stuff than I do and get everything properly done up and wired safely. So as tempted as I was to just rig up some extension cord off of my dryer or my fridge or oven or something like that. Actually not a fridge. I'm really glad it was set up well by somebody who knew what they were doing. Thanks dad. So get it set up properly and you'll thank yourself later when you have welds that are running better with a more stable arc and your local fire department might thank you for it later. Next up, another one not a lot of people think about is ventilation. I have terrible ventilation in the studio here. My window is actually way past the camera back there and a lot of the time there's no way to really move the air around in here. So did I throw down for a big expensive fancy fume extraction system? No. I did buy a few really good fans to have placed around me to pull a lot of the fumes away from my work area as well as I had fans in the window and I popped the garage door and I have fans blowing everything out of the garage as well. You need fresh air. Argon is not a reactive or poisonous gas but it will over time displace oxygen. Now it would take a larger amount of gas in a really tight confined space to get you in that kind of trouble where you don't have enough oxygen, but it can happen. Basically, make sure you're getting fresh air, you're not huffing fumes, hunched over a weld zone all day while practicing and not paying attention. Anytime I get in here to do something like an art piece where I'm gonna spend a ton of time working on welding stainless steel or something like that, I'm always wearing my respirator. It's a 3M respirator with P100 filters on it. You can double check as far as what type of filter you need. Pretty sure this is the one I need. Fits tight, it works great. Even though I have a bit of a beard, still works really good. Proper ventilation and a proper respirator for practicing, you're styling, you got good protection. Okay, another important one, a fire extinguisher. Always know where your fire extinguisher is. Where the heck is my fire extinguisher? I don't have to look for that, I don't even know where that is. And keep it close to you without a bunch of messy clutter in its way. You never expect any trouble until it's too late. Get one, learn how to use it, and then you're set. Another thing that a lot of people think about when it comes to fire is keeping combustible materials clear and free of your weld area. Lacquer thinner, acetone, rubbing alcohol, stuff like that that we use on a regular basis to clean what we're working with, keep it far away. I have steel buckets and that stuff lives over there in the steel buckets. If I need some acetone or lacquer thinner or something, put all my stuff down, I go over, pour a little bit on a rag, come over, 
clean when I need to, and then the rag goes back in the bucket before I even start welding. It's a rule I've always had. I've seen many people running through the shop with a flaming rag on a stick, trying to get outside before the boss sees them. Always make sure that your area is free from flammable or combustible materials. Another thing not a lot of people think about when it comes to safety in a work area is burns. I don't know if you've been burned before. I've been burned several times and it sucks so bad. I would almost rather get cut by something super sharp than get a burn. Getting a burn is a terrible experience. But first off, we'll go over some fundamental things to stop you from getting burned in the first place. One rule somebody taught me when I first started working in a welding shop was literally act like everything on a table is always hot. Whether it's a workpiece that you just finished working on, whether it's a tool that you have on the bench, I don't know about you. If you ever put a wrench down on something hot and then a couple minutes later go to grab it and that thing is just as hot as the workpiece underneath it, I have seen people take devastating burns to their hands from stuff like this. A good rule of thumb, somebody always taught me when you're going to check out someone's work table, it's hands behind your back. You can lean over, you can check out all kinds of stuff you want, your hands are behind your back until you find out what's actually hot, what's just been worked on before you start handling things. Good rule of thumb to live by. Obviously the next best thing to stop you from getting burned is proper gloves. I got many different types of gloves here. These gloves are from Justin Voss. Justin Voss's Instagram is right there. I'll put a link to Justin Voss's YouTube channel below. He's got an awesome channel. He's an awesome dude. He sends me gloves. I really appreciate you, Justin, your rule, man. Basically, there's many different types of gloves out there. I've done a couple episodes on them, but the one thing that you wanna make sure Whatever type of gloves you're using, you want them to be free of any kind of holes or tears. Look at these gloves here. These are gloves that I actually use for more material handling. I don't really use them for welding anymore. They look like trash. They've been torn a bunch. They got holes in them. Never weld with holes in your gloves. Check out this glove here. This glove here is almost brand new and look at the tip of the finger. It's got a hole in it. So I'm gonna give you a little hot tip on how to repair gloves real quick. I've seen a lot of people use duct tape. Don't use duct tape. The reason not to use duct tape is because that stuff melts super easy. So if you're working with clean aluminum or clean stainless steel, like if I'm working with an art piece, it has to stay absolutely spotless. Even if you touch a hot surface with a piece of duct tape, it's just gonna melt and streak off and that stuff is hard to get off a work surface. What I use is this. This is a really common type of tape. It's, I believe it's called painter's tape or whatever, but it's a really dry type of tape with a glue that doesn't tend to melt off. You can just use a couple little pieces like so, wrap it around, make a little bandaid out of it, boom. You have decent dexterity underneath, but most of all, you get rid of the hole in the glove. You're not gonna have glue streaking across anything. And most importantly, you're not gonna get burned. This is an important one. Getting burned sucks. If you get burned, the one thing that I learned to do right away is run as fast as you can to a sink or something like that and fully run it under cool water. I read somewhere you're not supposed to do really cold water. I don't really know. I've done it under cold water before, but what you wanna do is you wanna stop any extra inflammation to the skin area. Basically, this is what a blister is. You wanna fully run it underwater until the pain stops. And then what somebody has recommended to me is to use some kind of non-fragrance type cream, something without irritants of any kind in it. Keep it moist, keep it damp, and keep it covered. A burn is a terrible thing. So when we're welding all the time, Time, please be careful with this one. The next one's here, super simple. Eyes and ears. Pretty easy to poke yourself in the eye with something stupid without meaning to. Seen it happen many times. I've got metal shavings in my eye one time that sucked so bad. Wear something to cover up your peepers, keep them safe. Also, ticking aluminum is loud. You get that set up on a high frequency on an inverter type machine, that noise is deafening after a while. Put some kind of earplugs in, whatever it is. Earbuds, turn your music up louder than the buzzing, whatever. No, I'm just kidding. Kind of. Do something to cut down on that noise. That noise is crazy loud. Especially in a smaller space, cut down on noise exposure. It'll let you focus better on what you're working on. Okay, I think we've got most of the stuff out of the way. Please let me know in the comments below if I've forgotten anything or if there's anything else that you can recommend to get my super haphazard setup more safe in this area here. Obviously, I'm gonna find the fire extinguisher. I swear I put it right here. It's around here somewhere. But if you're a beginner and you're just getting going and you appreciated learning some stuff from this episode here today, here's how you can repay me. Go out today and do a random act of kindness for a complete stranger. It can be something big, it can be something small. Just do something to spread a little bit of positivity in the world today, we need it. So to the Arkheads who watch all the way to the end of every episode, I appreciate you as always. Everyone else out there, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Phil and chill, we'll talk soon, peace.